no 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 n o no but there's always a way around it <laughs> welcome back to my channel it is me Mine, your favorite youtuber and i'm here back on your screens to give you guys quality content bringing you content live from canada so please stay tuned and watch stay to the end of this video thank you okay so in first i want to give a disclaimer if you know that you don't like to hear the truth you know you know deep down that you don't like to hear the truth no matter how because we all know that the truth hurts and you know that you don't like to hear the truth because it hurts. <laughs> I don't think this video is for you. In fact, this video is not for you. But if you're the type that you believe that, yeah, the truth hurts, but last, last, we must hear it. We have to hear it. We don't have an option. Then, please stay till the end of this video. Because in this video, I am spilling the tea and I am not sugarcoating anything. Finances is one very important topic that people do not like to talk about but it is something that has to be talked about because if you mess up your finances you like basically mess up like more than half of your life especially if you're coming into a country new or you're coming as an international student and you want to sponsor yourself in school it's very important that you talk about finances and there are a few factors to consider before you decide that you want to sponsor yourself as an international student. The first one is your international student fees. The second one is your income or wage. The third one, the rules and regulations that surround or that are made for international students working in that country. Now, as an international student, as a current international student, I am here to like, I'm talking from, um, um saying from what i've experienced a fair experience i can i can tell you that it is not easy to pay your international student school fees while working but like i said earlier there's always a way around it now can you pay your international student fees while working is one question that so many international students have on their mind before they start this and back on this canadian school journey now this is because majority of the international students here in canada or the ones still coming to canada sponsor themselves through school before i go into the topic directly i just want to state a few things before you are allowed to work in canada as an international student there are certain requirements you have to meet you must be enrolled in a designated learning institution here in canada google has a list of schools that are dlis here in canada and i think like majority of the public universities here are DLIs and most private schools as well, private universities as well here in Canada are also DLIs, but Google will always help you with that. If you need to know schools that are DLIs in Canada, you can always use Google to check that. The second one is you should have a social insurance number. That social insurance number is very, very, very important before you can actually get a job. It is required. The third requirement is that you are enrolled in a post-secondary program here in Canada, either academic, vocational or professional training program. That is the third requirement. The fourth requirement is that you have a study permit that has a clause that permits you to work while schooling. You must also have started your study before trying to look for a job. You can't just come to Canada as an international student and the first thing you're looking for is a job, especially if you haven't started taking your lectures. You have to have started taking your lectures first before you can actually start looking for a job. The fifth requirement is that your study program is at least six months leading to a degree and yeah, leading to a degree that's going to enable you to get a certificate, either undergraduate, graduate program, masters, it just has to be at least six months long before you're able to work in Canada. Those are all the requirements you need that you need to satisfy as an international student before you're able to work in Canada. Now, international student school fees, they differ based on the country, the province you're going to. The, let's start with the country you're going to, the province you're going to, the school you're going to, and the course you are choosing. There are provinces with cheaper schools, and there are provinces that have like very, very expensive school fees. There are some provinces that their schools 
for a year you have like fifty thousand canadian dollars as school fees thirty thousand canadian dollars as school fees and then there are some schools in canada where you have like ten thousand canadian dollars as school fees for a year yeah there are schools like that so it all depends on you what do you want is this something you know you can do if it's something you know you can do then now choose based on your capacity and how you can pay the school fees next one is the hourly wage or income there's something called a minimum wage here in canada or in every country minimum wage is the lowest amount of money you can earn per hour while working this amount varies for every province and this amount doesn't mean that because the minimum wage for this province is this amount that means that's the money you must earn you can earn higher per hour it depends on your employer and it depends on the type of job you get currently the minimum wage in manitoba is about 11.95 but from october sometime in october this year they are thinking of increasing it to 13 dollars 50 cents sometime in october this year so minimum wages in different provinces vary, really, like i said so you choose the province you're going to so minimum wage and the province you're going to has an effect on making a decision on the school you want to go to and also whether you're able to sponsor yourself this is the rule that just annoys majority of the international students here in canada <laughs> this rule states that international students while in school are not allowed to work more than 20 hours a week off campus but if you're working on campus you're allowed to work more than 20 hours a week now this is where this whole if can an international student work and pay their school fees this is where the this is where i'm about to say the truth the way it is international students are allowed to work on or off campus while schooling on campus all you need is just a study permit that grants you the permission to work and a social insurance number and off campus is the same thing it's study permit that grants you the permission to work and a social insurance number if you're an international student and you're currently taking lectures and the semester is currently going on you're not allowed to work more than 20 hours a week if you work more than 20 hours a week while you're taking lectures it's going to affect you in the long run when you're trying to get your permanent residency or when you're trying to get your citizenship so make sure while you're taking lectures and you're working off campus you are not working more than 20 hours a week the only exception to working full-time off campus is when you're on vacation let me say summer vacation um, maybe during christmas break um yeah when we have just all those vacations that's the only time you're allowed to work full-time off campus but while you're in school while the school is in session you're allowed to work just part-time which is 20 hours a week now this is where the problem is currently my school the university of manitoba the average school fees for a year is about fourteen thousand dollars to fifteen thousand dollars so now let's be honest let's be realistic the minimum wage is eleven dollars 95 cents and let me say you are working off campus and you have a job and they're probably paying you twelve dollars per hour or thirteen dollars per hour or if you're lucky fifteen dollars per hour and you're an international student who's sponsoring yourself at the same time paying your rent paying your bills and your semester, your school fees for one semester is about $5,000, $6,000. It depends on the number of courses you um, register for that semester. Because here in the U of M, one course is about $1,000 plus. Depends on the faculty, where that course is coming from. But like in science um, faculties, of course, the courses are going to be more expensive than most of the um, courses in the faculty of arts, faculty of law and all of that. So I'm just going to give like a scenario and then will now see how it is possible to pay your school fees whether it's possible or it's not possible to pay your school fees while working as an international student so you're working in part-time 13 dollars per hour and you're not allowed to work more than 20 hours a week and probably and obviously that is going to be your only job except you have two jobs and then you now say okay in this job i'm going to have like 10 hours a week for this job and then 10 hours a week for the other job and then it just makes 20 hours a week for the two jobs but mind you you're going to school and you need you also need to concentrate you don't need to overwork yourself because it, those good grades are also required because if you fail you definitely will not have to repeat the year which gives you a longer time in school and makes you to pay more school fees that you do not plan for or you do not budget for so let me say you just have one job and you have to pay your school fees with that job and you pay your rent 
and you pay your hydro bill you pay your wi-fi bill every other bill you have to pay if you have a phone bill that you're paying for it you're gonna have to pay for that as well which is monthly then you have to pay a, a tuition fee of about five thousand dollars six thousand dollars now tell me how is it possible that you're going to do all of this when you have no support of any kind no sponsorship of any kind the truth absolutely nothing but the truth is that it is not as easy as most people say it is i've seen where people say oh yeah yes it is possible it is not as easy i'll be honest with you guys in your first year especially if you're new here when you come here newly there are going to be points where you're going to be like ah now who send me hey god she not like this in the beep I am going, like I said earlier in this video, I'm saying the truth the way it is. I am not sugarcoating anything. It's not going to be easy in your first year, but definitely, like I said earlier, there is always a way around it. There's always a way, always a solution. It doesn't mean that you're going to go back, but I have to tell you, you have to be positive. You have to keep your mind on your goal. Don't forget why you left your country to come to Canada. Don't use because of the current situation that you're facing. Let me say you have school fees ahead of you and you have like how many months? Let me say like two, three months, just gather up to like $6,000. Don't give up and say, because I could, I, I could not do this, I'm going back to my country. I don't think that's going to be the best decision for anybody to make. But there is always a solution. Like I have been saying, there's always a solution. Now, these are the only ways that you can actually pay your school fees while working as an international student. These are the only exceptions. Number one, you have someone who is covering your rent and your other bills, or you're not paying rent, you're probably staying with someone and you're, they're letting you live with them for free. And maybe your hydro bill is just like 30 bucks, 20 bucks a month or something of that sort. And it's just, it's not something that takes too much of your money. Yeah, basically you're not paying bills. So that money that you're supposed to put in bills, you could actually be saving it for your school fees. Another exception is that you have a job that is paying you really, really well and they have like benefits where they can help you to like pay your school fees. There are some companies that you work with and they can actually help you pay your school fees and just like, and then you're just working for them and everything and then you pay them back in due time whenever you're able to. Another exception is if you have a scholarship, if you're able to get a scholarship or if you're able to apply for bursaries in your school, then your tuition fee can be reduced to an amount and then you're able to work the other amount of money and then you're able to pay yourself and the last one is if you are able to apply for a loan now majority of the loan companies in canada require a co-signer before they can give you a loan a co-signer is someone who is more like a guarantor who is going to stand in for you who's trying to get the loan now the truth is this co-signer has to be either a permanent resident or a citizen in canada but the clause there is that most people wouldn't like to co-sign for students except they really, 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 really trust you. Because if you're not able to meet up every month, the bank or the loan company or whoever you're collecting the loan from is going to be collecting the money from the co-signer. And that is going to like have an effect on the co-signer's credit score. or And also your credit score is going to be affected if you're not able to meet up with the loan. So this is the truth that people won't say. People will say, yes, yeah, I'm not saying it's not possible. It is definitely possible. But I'm going to tell you in the long run, like when you come initially, it's going to feel like it's impossible. Like, why, why did I start this? But I'm just going to tell you, you have to be positive, keep a f an open mind and just believe that you came here for a reason. Keep your eyes on the goal. Don't say because of this small pressure, small push, I'll just give up don't do that it is not as easy as they say it but it is possible there's always going to be a way around it if you get to some point where you're not able to meet up you could actually talk to your school talk to advisors in your school and they could give an advice on how to meet up some schools actually give loans to students like the university of manitoba i know i think the highest they can give is about a thousand dollars and then you pay them back i don't know how the payment plan is but i think it's about a thousand dollars for the u of m and then they're also like i mentioned earlier they're also loan companies but there are few loan companies that don't require co-signers like you could actually just apply and then the interest rate doesn't have to be too high 
mind you when you're looking for loan companies don't say because of pressure or because you're in a hurry you just moving like that to the door listing so you don't regret and go into depression at the end of the day look for loan companies that the interest rates are not so high and there's something that you can actually afford and something that you're very 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 comfortable with like i said i am saying the truth the way it is i'm not sugarcoating anything i'm not saying it's impossible but it's not easy you have to prepare your mind that when you're coming here you're coming if you're coming as an international student who is sponsoring himself or herself you're coming here to actually do some work you're coming here to put in some effort it's not going to be easy the first year but by the second year the third year it's, you're going to see that stress has, has reduced and you have found a way around how to pay your school fees until you finish your program or until you finish whatever you came here for and then you cannot apply for your postgraduate work permit and then probably like start getting ready to get your PRO and then walk into what your citizenship and all of that yeah so I hope I didn't break any hearts I hope I was able to like tell you guys I hope this video is not too long I don't know how long the video is but I just hope that I was able to like sensitize you guys and tell you guys the truth because most people will say yes 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 come 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 but when you come you find out that you're on your own like you're on your own you are just on your own and then and Canada is a place where everybody's busy doing their own thing. So even if you're like going through depression and everything, it's not something that you can just call someone and say, oh, this is what I'm going through. Like, everybody has their own problem. Everybody has what they're facing at the moment. So guys, this is the end of the video. I hope I, by the end of this video, I didn't break your heart or I didn't make you to feel bad or feel discouraged. But like I said, the truth has to be said. And I hope you learned something. I hope if you're planning to sponsor yourself i hope this has helped to encourage you and to help brace yourself up um yeah i feel like this is just a positive positive video telling you to keep being positive and don't give up because you're seeing a very huge figure that you have to pay like i said in my video there's always a way around it and i hope you find a way around it like i said in the video Please, if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something and you know anyone who wants to sponsor themselves to school or come to Canada as an international student, please share this video with the person. Support my channel basically and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.